Did USC's coaching staff mess up? You are Locked On Trojans, your daily podcast on the USC Trojans, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Fight on, everyone. I'm your host, Mark Holkin. Thank you for making Locked On USC part of the Locked On Network, your first listen every day. Whether you're watching the show on YouTube, wherever you're downloading your podcast, this show is always free, and this show always appreciates your support. Now, one of my everyday listeners, viewers, brought this brought this up, and I said, you know what? Let's talk about it. Let's make a segment out of it. One of the biggest complaints that I hear from USC recruiting fans, football fans, is the staff's ability to kind of hone in and, and keep the local kids, keep them at home instead of you know, bolting for other programs across the country in the SEC and the and the big conference, Big Ten conference. What I need to kind of explain, I want to explain this to everybody. Not everything is black and white. Okay, there's there's a lot of gray area when it comes to college football recruiting. Just because um, he's a highly rated player on a high school team, that doesn't necessarily mean that that's going to translate to the next level. How many times have we seen can't miss prospect coming to USC ends up missing? Happens a lot. Not just to USC. It happens across the country more often than you would think. You know, sometimes, you know, the the player just doesn't fit the scheme. Okay. Sometimes the player is overrated. That's why we don't like to use the star ranking system. Takes away one of those elements you know because look every single coach who's recruiting this young man can't be wrong right if they're all power five program power four level programs coaches they're they're not all wrong you know there's times where you know the player has no interest in usc regardless okay let's take that in consideration sometimes there's parents involved grandparents it happens and believe it or not, there are actually some high school coaches who will steer players to programs away from USC for a variety of reasons. Um, you know, we, I'm not going to get in, I'm not going to dive too deeply into that, and I'm not going to get into the weeds on that one too deeply. But so recently, um, St. John Bosco, local high school, powerhouse, similar up there with modern day. Uh, they held they held what they call their showcase their team showcase, and what basically it's they invite college coaches in from all over the country. They come in, and it's the opportunity to see the latest group of prospects uh, that will be coming through the program for the next handful of years, starting with the freshmen, sophomores, juniors, seniors. Hey, come on in, let's hang out together and uh, see what Bosco has to offer. And school, high schools all over the country do this. Modern day does this. Um, Centennial does again. This is this isn't something unique to Bosco, but someone someone brought this situation up specifically. Um, you know where was the USC coaching staff? They weren't there. Now keep in mind these showcases are supposed to be um, they're supposed to be player evaluation sessions. But what happens is they turn into these just total gab fests. Coaches just hanging around in these little cliques talking amongst each other. So there's no no one's being evaluated. All the coaches, again, they're, they're just hanging out, talking, you know, talking about their families. Oh, I had a kid. Do you have a kid? Uh, vacations, you know, other locker room material that we can't talk about on the show. It's a family-oriented show. So I guess why should the USC staff show up with all these other high school coaches and, and share, you know, get involved with this type of stuff when, you know, USC can have these young men all to themselves. But I get the optics. I truly understand where the question comes from. It kind of looks like USC doesn't care. But does it really matter? Honestly, let me, let me return the answer your question with a question. Does it really matter? Sure. You know, like Coach Riley and or his stat, you know, his, his cadre of assistant coaches, they can show up and, and see the next batch of freshmen. 
you know, that, that St. John Bosco brought in. They're another school that recruits heavily, just like modern day, just like all the private parochial schools. That's what they do. And look, maybe there are some a few underclassmen um, you're looking at to see what they look like, kind of catching up. So, all right, like I was a freshman last year. He's going to be a sophomore this year. Let's see what his body looks like. But again, how many you, is USC staff really going in hard right now on the freshmen and the sophomores? And how many of the juniors and the seniors are there at Bosco right now that USC is interested in? And again, and if we're talking about this year's squad specifically, how many of their 2025 guys does USC staff have serious interest in? You know, before they even played a game, remember, we're talking about the juniors going into their senior year. They haven't played a game yet. They're going through spring camp, do their own PRPs during the summer, and then fall camp and their senior season. So I, let me kind of put that out. That's probably why USC didn't have anybody there. Could they have sent one? Sure. They didn't. Here's keep the, Remember this. Again, gray area. Coach Riley, he can set up a practice session arrangement where some of his assistants can show up as a group. Just a quick phone call. Are you guys having practice today? I'm sending my assistants there. They don't need to be around you know, 100 other coaches from around the country. Or here's another option. You, Lincoln Riley can send out an invitation. Bring the team to, to one of our spring camp practices like they did this year. If you caught any of my spring camp practice reports, I told you about it. So if you're not familiar with the little things that are taken into consideration, then you're concerned. I get it. You want to ask the question. You want the answer. Why? And ask yourself, again, how many of the guys who went elsewhere in the past did USC miss on? You want to use some examples of, of the big-time players that came out of Bosco late, you know, recently? Like DJ Ungalele, quarterback. Did USC miss on him? What about his brother, Mateo, up there at Oregon? He's still playing in the kids' end of the pool. What wide receivers did USC miss on? Did they? It's not like the guys that USC didn't get kind of blew up when they went to Ohio State or Clemson or Alabama or Oregon. I'm not slamming the Bosco program. I like Coach Jason Negro. Cool dude. Love hanging out, talking with him. But you know what? Maybe USC staff knows how to evaluate, when to evaluate, who to evaluate. And again, when you peel back one of the layers, you'll notice that this year's Bosco squad going into the 2024 season, class of 2025, the guys who, again, who who are the, the players at Bosco right now that USC, that Coach Riley, should be all in on? It's a really young team at Bosco this year. As of right now, currently, USC has the number three rated class in the country. Coach Riley's not stupid. He might be stubborn. So am I. Who isn't, right? I have a feeling he knows what he's doing when it comes to high school recruiting. Last year, they had a pretty good class. They're on a, on a great pace to have a good class this year. Let's, let's slow down a little bit. I understand the consternation. USC should have at least had one person out there. Probably. You're probably right. But again, you, USC is in such a unique situation because of proximity. They can do things a little bit differently. How many times is Florida going to send an assistant coach out to California or Clemson? See where I'm going with this? They have to. USC doesn't have to. Difference. When you're hiring for your small business, you want to have as many top tier candidates as possible to interview. 
That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help you find the right professionals for your team, and they're going to do it faster, and they're going to do it for free. And LinkedIn isn't just another job board. LinkedIn has a vast network of more than a billion professionals. That's with a B, which makes it the best place to hire. And hiring is so easy when you have that many quality candidates. So easy, in fact, that 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. Thankfully, with LinkedIn, the process is intuitive, quick, and easy. They even just launched a feature that helps you write job descriptions, making the process even easier and quicker. Post your job for free at linkedin.com forward slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com forward slash locked on college. Post your job for free. Terms and conditions do apply. Are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day? You're turning down the volume, hitting that mute button because everybody's yelling and shouting. Make the switch to Locked on Sports today, a free 24-7 sports streaming channel program for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. Locked on Sports today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news. And it's streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. So how's this for a tease? Ready? I'm told to expect some USC football news to drop in the next day or two. Pretty sure it's defensive line related. That's all I got for now. Oh, P.S. I'll be in Alabaster, Alabama at Thompson High School on Tuesday to see a few of their guys, including edge rusher Jared Smith. That was from WeRSC.com's recruiting insider, Scott Schrader, Sunday night. Yeah. Like I said, how's that for a tease? <laughs> so far, uh, no news has broke once since this show has gone into production. And um, so, question, what do you think that good news could be? Let's speculate. Let's throw some spaghetti in the wall. What sticks? I... I mean, I've, I've said this in the past. I don't anticipate any commitments uh, before anyone takes an, an official visit at the end of the month or in June. So I don't think it's going to be a commitment. Could be, but I don't feel that. Last week on Locked on USC, uh, I went over USC's visitor list for the upcoming official visit. Oh, by the way, uh, I didn't mention it a second ago. Uh, Coach Henderson, he's supposed to be visiting Thompson High School today, too. So I doubt that it's the stud defensive end, Ed Rusher, committing Jared Smith. Uh, right there on the spot, at least, with Coach Henderson. But again, where Coach Henderson isn't at Bosco, he's out there looking for the defensive line that he wants. Guys who are eligible in this recruiting class. So. I can tell you this, no one new showed up in the transfer portal out of the blue, so we know it's not that type of good news. I don't, maybe someone's paperwork got lost in the shuffle all of a sudden. I checked. I didn't see any new names, <laughs> so it's not bad. Is it possibly someone coming back to USC who was in the portal? I guess. Could be. I don't think it's Dejan Lafitte which is still really perplexing. I am looking, I'm trying to find out why he left. doesn't make any sense. Someone raised the name Colin Mobley. Maybe he's coming back. Okay, maybe. He plays a position of need. Did, oh, did USC finally decide on somebody in the transfer portal? Is that possible? Again, purely speculation. Trying to read the tea leaves, trying to figure out what Scott was hinting about. He hasn't updated with any hints, by the way. But what if it's this? Yeah. Again, I have no inside information or intelligence. Some will say I have zero intelligence to begin with. But there has been a lot of speculation that the number one player in the 2026 recruiting cycle Defensive lineman, Joaquin Stewart, that he's considering reclassifying into the 2025 recruiting class. Yeah. 
head coach Lincoln Riley, defensive line coaches Eric Henderson, Sean Nua. Um, they already have USC in a great position to close out the 2025 recruiting class the same way it started. You got Justice Terry, who they flipped from Georgia. You've got Isaiah Gibson, four star from the state of Georgia. And they got Gus the Bus Cordova, four star from the state of Texas. He will be a four star, by the way. Those guys, they're already pledged to play for the Trojans. Um, they did that following an unofficial visit back in March. Remember the crawfish boil? Those guys were there. Each of those guys are coming back in a few weeks for their own official visit. Now, although Stewart is not is not on the official visitor list, he is returning to USC for another unofficial in June. This is what he told We Are SC. <coughs> Excuse me. In June, I really just want to work out with Coach Henderson, said Stewart. Show him what I can do and get a feel of what it's like working with him. Me and Coach Clyde, that's his high school coach, will be going to the schools that, I really, that I'm really considering and just working with those coaches to see how I like it. So for those of you who are doubting, eh, this guy doesn't have any interest in USC, sounds like he does. Sounds like he has some serious interest in USC. If Stewart reclassifies into the 2025 class, not only will it give the Trojans coaching staff one more defensive line prospect that, the, that they're looking to sign, but that could definitely lead to USC having the number one overall recruiting class. This is probably a pipe dream, but imagine this. Justice Terry, Isaiah Gibson, Gus the Bus Cordova, Jared Smith from Alabama. Elijah Griffin, state of Georgia. Oh, and Stewart from New Orleans. Oh, baby. I told you, Eric Anderson wants the greatest defensive line class ever recruited. On paper, that might be. Maybe. Here's another way out of left field possibility. Again, just throwing it out there. How about a cheap defensive analyst hire? And I say cheap because I think he might be still being paid by the LA Rams. I wonder if Aaron Donald has any free time on his hands. Just saying. Just saying. Again, this is not based on anything. Nada. But if I had an extra 50 bucks laying around, I would bet $25 on Stuart reclassifying. And then I would probably take the other 25 bucks and throw it on USC found somebody in the transfer portal to bring in. So again, purely speculation. I have no idea, but Scott dropped that nugget in there. He's got everybody kind of hitting F5, hitting refresh, seeing what's going on. Everybody's checking out social media. Nothing. What do you think it is? Tell me. Hit me up in the comments section. What do you think it could be? When it comes to your financial future, you think you've done it all. You've saved, you've researched, you've invested all that you can. Now you need to take those investments to the next level by using what every financial great uses, Yahoo Finance. And this could not exist without the help of our sponsors like Yahoo Finance. For more than 25 years, Yahoo Finance has been the brand behind every great investor. Whether you're a seasoned investor or you're looking for extra guidance, Yahoo Finance gives you all the tools and data you need in one place. Securely link your brokerage accounts to a unified view of your wealth, including 401k and your other investments. With a community of over 90 million users each month, their, their real strength is helping you find your way to financial success. For comprehensive financial news and analysis, visit the brand behind every great investor, yahoofinance.com. The number one financial destination, that's yahoofinance.com. That's yahoofinance.com. I'm telling you right now, take the over. You got some extra money? Check out the couch cushions. Take the over. This is 
free money. So the Action Network, Brett McMurphy, you've heard of him. They put out their over-under for the Big Ten Conference. Win totals. I'm going to run down the list here. Deep breath. Ohio State, 10 and a half. Oregon, 10 and a half. Michigan, 9 and a half. Penn State, 9 and a half. Iowa, 7 and a half. Nebraska, 7 and a half. USC, 7 and a half. Washington, 7 and a half. Maryland, they don't get the hook. 7. Rutgers, 6 and a half. Wisconsin, 6 and a half. Illinois, 5 and a half. Indiana, 5 and a half. Northwestern, 5 and a half. Oh, here's UCLA, 5 and a half. Minnesota, no hook. Five wins. Michigan State, four and a half. Purdue, four and a half. So USC is not considered the upper echelon of the big conference, right? These, these win totals are obviously based on their schedules. So I'm telling you, take the over on USC. Let me remind you of USC schedule. If we're talking about just home games, I think. I can assume that USC should win every game at home this year. Their toughest home game, probably Penn State. But again, you get Utah State, Wisconsin, Penn State, Rutgers, Nebraska, Notre Dame. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, that's six wins right there. You're at UCLA. That's you want to call it a road game? That's seven. Now, let's, let's look at their other road games. At Minnesota, there's your eighth win. At Maryland, there's your ninth win. So now we've got what? LSU? You got Michigan? Can you get one of those two? I'm telling you, if USC has seven wins, and, and I get it. All these numbers are based on you got to show me you got a defense, Lincoln Riley. I get that. But look at their schedule. Let's say USC wins every game at home. You're telling me they don't, they can't get two wins on the road out of Maryland, Minnesota, UCLA, even the game at Washington. Jed Fish is a really good coach. Don't get me wrong, but he's in a rebuild process up there right now. He does not have Noah Fafita throwing at quarterback. He does not have T-Mac doing those crazy one-handed catches. Those guys are still at Arizona. I think he'll get the job done in Seattle, but not this year. And by the way, you got to love it. Having UCLA down there, five and a half. Have you looked at their schedule? It's not a joke. I mean, it's... You think USC's got a rough schedule? Look at UCLA. Where are they going to get their five and a half wins? They open the season at Hawaii. Then they come home for Indiana. They're at LSU. No, yeah. They're in Baton Rouge, Red Stick. Then they host Oregon. They're at Happy Valley, at Penn State. Then they host Minnesota. At Rutgers. At Nebraska. They get to host Iowa. At Washington, hosting USC. Oh, and they close the season at home against Fresno State. <laughs> um, let's give you let's give UCLA the win at Hawaii. I think they'll get that win. But after Indiana, if you don't win there, LSU, Oregon, Penn State. Those are three losses. Now. UCLA always surprises teams in the early part of the season. You want to know why this happens? For those of you who aren't familiar with the difference between USC and UCLA, UCLA is on the quarter system. Uh, their student athletes, they don't start class until the end of September. So those guys, they are focused on football solamente only for literally the first month of the season. Fall camp. First month of the season, they're not going to class. They don't have their books open. They have their playbooks, but that's it. That's why you always see UCLA pull off a, a win at Texas. Those things happen for a reason, or at AM, those big comeback wins. 
Remember that when that happened? Anyways, this is about USC, but I wanted to tell you where UCLA is going to get six wins this year. I don't see it happening. I would take the under. That's for easy money. Take the over on USC. And yeah, some of those other ones, Michigan, nine and a half. I get it. They don't even leave the state of Michigan until October rolls around. But their schedule's not a joke either. Remember, I told you, we're going to know what Michigan's all about before USC gets there. They host Texas first. So we'll see. All right, that's it. The show is over. Pretty informational, though. Hey, don't forget, when you're done making Locked on USC your first listen every day, we also have that Locked on Sports Network thing that we do, national show. Check that out. And also, do not forget, head on over to WeRSC.com. Take advantage of that subscription special. The buck. I'll be back with another episode of Locked on USC tomorrow. That's what we do five times a week. So until then, everyone, you know what to do.